It is on rare occasions where policing turns out a success without traces of harm, injury or even death. This has over time raised public outcry on how law enforcement is handled henceforth painting the security image black. Many are in the spotlight for using excessive force while dispersing rowdy civilians, conducting arrests and giving orders. <laughs> Police officers are captured in videos clobbering unarmed civilians, but move away scot-free. We only need a reporting line where any act against a, a, a Ugandan is well reported and well handled and the officer is disciplined. In these operations, other security agencies reinforce Uganda police. We don't need more guns in the public. We only need more intelligence. We only need more involvement of Wanainchi into their own intelligence. The police, mostly those on operations, survive on day-to-day -day tokens from lawbreakers. Just do a research. If you say there is no grabbing border borders, there is no what, don't extort, before you reorganize them, they will die of hunger. So what do we do? Fred Egesa, a security analyst, believes that lack of discipline, command and control is the virus eating up Uganda police force. These officers may, the, the police officers know what to do. But they're either naive and, or they are, some of them are possibly working on, on sit down strike. President Museveni is not in support of security operatives that clobber and injure people while enforcing the law. And unknown to the president and the government is these police officers are not silly. And they know what should be done. And they know at what at time it should be done. But they deliberately omit to do it just because of one reason or the other. And that's what we should find out and then put them straight. On the other hand, Fred Egesa terms the acts of torturing suspects to extort information as barbaric and primitive. Maybe what they would say is we need much more time other than the 48 hours to deal with this person, but respect, okay, you may take out his rights of movement, but greatly respect him, greatly respect his human rights, um, and, uh, and of course the constitution. But what needs to be done to reverse and regain the image of Uganda police force? The, the president has to set up a, what we call like think tanks, from a, externally from a different people. Let them look at police, let, they, let them study the police, unlike the September Commission. Let them recommend what should be done around the police. The Inspector General of Police upon the President identifying unprofessional acts of police operations commits to effective implementation of police obligation under the anti-torture and human rights enforcement laws. Ivan Kahua, UBC News.